Yeah, so hi, I'm Jan Simon, and uh, in the LLVM Linux project, I'm taking care of the x86 side. Um, so I'm making sure that uh, we can build x86. So um, let's first talk about what we are right now. So last year, we needed quite a huge set of pages for LLVM and the kernel. Uh, right now, we can compile with upstream with the released version 3.3, which is great. Um, still, for the kernel, we need a few patches. Yeah? And uh, that's why we are here. We need to sort out what, where they should go, what's happening with them. So um, we also checked how, yeah, how many options we can actually enable. So I started with an all yes config and then went down. So we are about, I think, 95% really works. Um, and we have a list uh, which kernel options are still sort of broken. So, yep. When you say broken, what do you mean exactly? Um, they do not build mainly with Clang or second part, they do not boot. So what we have in the wiki, they just refuse to build right now. Yeah. And in order to, well, go on and get it working, I just dis disabled it. Um, quick to get, um, to get it compiled yourself, that's a three-step instruction. Uh, we have been bitten by Murphy and the merge window. So latest upstream, we need to fix an issue with the mutex. So right now it's broken, but by the end of the day, um, we should be fine. OK. Um, so we solved a few issues. And I want to give you an impression how these looked like so we can go ahead with the next um, problems. So we had. Um, issues with the uh, assembly. The point was that um, we had, for example, BTC used with no um, size specified or length. And Clang was just, hey, what should I take? Yeah, I have different sizes. Yeah, I can I can guess. Or we, ha we had no default. That had, has been solved in Clang, meanwhile, and we just take the same defaults by now, which is great case solved so far. In the kernel, we had a similar case here. And that was in uh, ASMU access header. And it was the uh, get user. So here, uh, if you read back in the, uh, in the source, there's also a comment in, in there why th this is done like that. Um, in short, we specify the 32-bit register even on 64-bit here, yeah, because we can use the pair and we are fine. Yeah? Clang would bail out because, hey, 64-bit to 32-bit doesn't fit, bail out. So <coughs> I'm trying to understand the context. So what assembler is actually being used under the covers? Okay. So is this C yeah, trying to understand? I, ha I have what that the un un under the next in the next slide. So right now, uh, we are not using the integrated assembler of Clan. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we are using uh, yeah. GAS um, and uh, enabling the integrated assembler is the next step. So but I have that on the so next slide. So is trying to understand what the assembler is going to do, and well, can't. Yeah. Well, but. So why, do, why does C-Lang need to be updated to understand the length of, of the previous slide? Um, so in the previous one, I think. Is previous. So um, um, that was um, inland assembly. And we had what was happening here is um, that's all of the, uh, that's that's all in the unified x86 tree. So, 32-bit and 64-bit is both built out of the same code base. Okay. Yeah. 
So um, the issue was that to, to ease that, we just used BTC, no, no size, no length specified. So BT without the size means that the assembler can use the correct size depending on the arguments to the BT, and the BT arguments could be either 32-bit or 64-bit. It turns out we don't need that, but the other reason to use BT instead of saying the size explicitly is certain sizes, they both give the exact same result, but one size is one byte shorter than the other size. So it's, it's that kind of situation where the kernel really didn't want to specify because it would over-specify things and actually make worse code. And then uh, the CLang assembler used to complain about the fact that, hey, I don't know the size. Uh, they fixed it. I don't know why they that they don't work. And I'm not questioning that at all. I'm just asking why did, if you're still using gas, why did CLang need to be updated? Uh, well, we were passing this. Yeah, so Clang was passing this. Yeah. So one other thing here. So the, the answer is that for inline assembly, Clang uses its integrated assembler. So for this case, while, while you're not specifying the integrated assembler for assembling the actual um, code, it is doing assembling the inline assembler. OK, next over here. Pablo. Thank you. Uh, on the next slide, was that a global register variable? Because Clang does not support that. And so did you guys patch? Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's not a global, got it. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so here the point was, um, we are just actually just specifying the start, the starting point, yeah, and then just writing either two or sixty-four. Yeah, it worked. We we got away with it because the registers were used in pairs, so sixty-four bit has just the next register was was included. Um, in Clang, we 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 checked the size and said, okay, sixty-four, thirty-two doesn't match. Yeah, um, that we solved. Um, by changing this line, and it uses now ASMDX, which actually does exactly solve this problem. Yeah, we just had to change the, the format. There were some extra spaces added. Um, and um, that allows us to do the right thing or specify the right size, 32-bit, 64-bit. So let's see what we have left. Uh, if I look through the patch queue, which we have right now, uh, it boils down to a few things. So the boot code still needs uh, code 16, and Clang doesn't support it. So right now, we turn off the integrated assembler, force it, and um, rely on gas. By the way, that's not touched by the uh, central make file, that's why we have to specify it again. Yeah, we already have that flag enabled right now, but here we have to explicitly do so again. I'm just going to add something to that too. Um, one of the other fellows on the, on the team, um, PPAX, has actually gone through and turned off integrated assembler for specific object files. So he's actually gone through and added no integrated AS uh, for the specific files where the problem actually occurs. The problem is, unfortunately, is, is that it's a bit like playing whack-a-mole. Every time you add one to, the, to uh, not using the integrated assembler, another one pops up later on. So what we've done at the moment is we've turned it off for everything, and we're using gas for everything. The idea being is that once we're in a point where more, more eyes can look at it, then it makes sense to start fixing it properly. Yep. 
So that's also true here, real mode code. So that's what we have to do right now. And uh, yeah, we need to we, we need to discuss with uh, the LLVM folks what we can do about code 16. Yeah, right now it's just completely unsupported. Um, a quite new issue which uh, uh, was merged with the uh, weight wound mutexes uh, is the use of built-in constant P like that. Uh, we have no compile time failure here. With Clang we have a runtime failure. Uh, so it just refuses to boot here. Um, we are in discussions with Martin, but right now um, he likes to keep it. Uh, but we need to see what we can do. Right now it's uh, preventing us to boot. So as, as the compiler guy, I have to say that I really don't think that that's going to be an optimization. And if it is, I mean, I mean first of all, I think, I think that, that sort of hints not in these days is not really necessary for GCC to be able to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm pretty certain that, GC, that regardless of whether you have that built-in constant P, GCC is going to be able to figure that out and optimize that. Um, I'd be very surprised if you get different assembly with or without the built-in constant P. Mm -hmm. um, and even if, you are, even if that is giving you optimization, I can't imagine that that's giving you very much. So I don't know. I, I don't think that, that, that removing that is that big of a deal. Yeah. Um. I didn't compare on and, and diff the assembly yet um, because a few lines down we are hitting another issue which I'm just debugging. Um, so that's the, yeah. And one more in the, in the patch queue left and uh, we will talk about that also in the later talks is the use of named registers. And uh, this affects us actually just in one point and that's the current stack pointer. Yeah, right now we work around it like this, but um, as uh, BN, you, you, you push those patches or you send those patches out. Um, yeah, I did that for ARM and uh, th there's a certain amount of pushback and of course the problem unfortunately is, is because we're using a move, we're it, we're sending the value from the stack pointer to another register, which means that that register needs to be pushed to the stack. It means that um, best case, there's an extra three instructions, and uh, you know, in in general, that's not a huge deal. But of course, if it's ever used in a place that's that's uh, called on a regular basis, obviously that is a bigger deal. So, this is something that, in general, uh, as as a, a general replacement for the use of the named register, or the, the, uh, named reg uh, stack register uh, variable. Uh, so far, uh, upstream hasn't been particularly happy with. So we're going to have to find another another approach to solve this. Um, unfortunately, it might have to be an if def clang do this. Otherwise, do it the the C uh, C plus uh, pardon me the GCC way. But uh, uh, we're also talking about um, ways we can potentially get just the stack pointer added to uh, to LLVM in a, in a future release. So, but that's something we still have to look at. Yeah. Okay. It actually affects all architectures. It's not just an x86 or ARM thing. Yeah, x86, ARM, you name it. Yeah. OK, so uh, right now we are at sort of um, 8 to 10 patches left. Yeah. Uh, just for x86, we have a few more cable patches. So um, well, there's 17 general ones. Yeah. There's eight specific to x86. Yeah. So um, I think it's doable to get those uh, properly um, upstreamed. Yeah, we, we will have discussions. Let's do that like that. Or, well, can't we do that over there? Can we do that in Clang? Can we do that? Can we do that in the kernel somehow? Um, well, midterm, um, we will also try to re-enable the integrated assembler. Bryce will talk about that. Uh, in one of the next talks. Um, and um, pr 
probably we will need then a few more cha uh, changes uh, in the inline assembly, but uh, I don't want to um, spoil on, on Bryce's talk. Um, yeah, so what we know, without changes, we, we are around 75% at least, which already works with the integrated assembler. Originally, it, as Behan said uh, in the original patch set, uh, it was turned on and just disabled per file. So uh, it's doable. Okay, so now our questions for the, for the, for the session. So let's discuss. So what, um, uh, how, how can we get those patches upstreamed as soon as possible. Yeah, so uh, from, from the maintainers, um, we see concerns regarding, well, we don't want a lot of if devs regarding the compiler. Yeah, can we, for example, move that to, um, let's say, a compiler dash clang header, yeah, and, and centralize those changes, which is actually um, a good thing. The solutions we want uh, should work just for both. That's actually our ideal solution. Sometimes we probably don't get to this point. And, well, for those pledges, we also need to find a proper place. Yeah? Um, and therefore, we need your input. Yeah? Be it in the kernel, be it in Clang. Yeah? Sometimes it's sort of... Uh, one line change over here, but like 200 lines over there. So we need also your guidance on where we can uh, fix that at best. And uh, yeah, I want to enter our discussions now. So yeah, I also want to point out that, that in some cases when it comes to getting things working again, just so we can actually get to the point of figuring out what the real problem is, Sometimes, uh, especially on x86, um, we've had to basically get it working with something that's completely not upstreamable, um, you know, some kind of hack. And then what we, we try to do is we try to find a, um, an approach that actually might be something that we can get upstream. And then, of course, we have to actually look and, and, and start talking to the maintainers and figure out what actually is acceptable. Um, because there's usually a lot bigger uh, bigger picture kinds of things than, than any one person necessarily understands. And that's what, what uh, uh, the deal is, certainly with the, the problems that Jan Simone has been talking about, is essentially these are, these are issues that we've, we've patched around, we've found ways that seem to work that, you know, don't seem to have a huge, uh, we, we, we can't see that they have a huge downside uh, on, the, um, on the, uh, the GCC side, but ultimately uh, we're trying to get it to work for both compilers. We, we don't want to negatively impact either. So we're looking for solutions, you know, either changes to LLVM, to, uh, to um, uh, GCC, uh, you know, to the kernel code. And uh, it's a matter of finding the right place to do things based on what's possible, uh, how much complexity it might add in the various places, and ultimately what's best for everyone. So. I think at, at the beginning you said, you know, with most options on. So with all options on, do you know what the problems are? Are, are they all associated so, uh, with inline let, let, assembly? Let me open that page. Um, network, yep. Um, I, don't mean, I don't mean to quote. Rumsfeld here, but over there. Yeah. Unknown unknowns. <laughs> So I took the time to start with uh, all just config and then basically go down, catch the um, the build errors. Yeah. So this space is, is just build errors. Uh, catch build errors, document it, and then I turned the option off and went on. Yeah. So that's right. That's right now my documentation. What doesn't compile. 
at the moment. Yeah? Um, I, to get it to boot finally, I had to turn a few more off. Yeah, that was a bit more. Um, uh, in our Git repo, we have now a working, a booting config, uh, which we keep up to date with um, master. Um, as, as good at, at, as it works. Yeah, sometimes if, if the kernel merge window opens, if Clang merge window opens, uh, we, uh, we get bitten by both. Um, but right now with uh, Clang 3.3 and this configuration, we can get a booting, a booting kernel out. Yeah? Small footnote, right now we fix the mutex stuff, but Language feature that's not implemented, right? Yep. Yes. GNU extension. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Uh, so, so j just to briefly answer that, um, there is a couple issues in drivers. Like, for example, the ThinkPad driver. There's nested functions that are used there, and it's like the only place in the kernel that it's used. And I think the reason that that option won't work without a patch is because it's, to my knowledge, um, I don't know if we've ever tried to submit that upstream, but, but I, I, don't know, I don't know how actively maintained that driver is. And there's also some issues with, with language stuff. There's one issue with um, attributes sometimes not being recognized depending on where they're placed in the declaration of a type or, or function. Um, which is causing some, uh, sp specifically, some things that should be in a certain section of, of the binary to not be in that particular section. Um, so there are some more obscure issues like that, and certainly there's issues with things that are runtime problems. The Linux kernel definitely pushes compilers harder than any other code base I've ever seen. So it, uh, it, it plays off in the areas that are, that are uh, you know, potentially undefined or not specified at all in C, C standards. The good thing is the C standards are getting better. And in part, I think the Linux kernel is driving the C standards because uh, the, the kernel code, in some cases, without any change, is becoming more and more C standards compliant. <laughs> more questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you, you were able to build the kernel. Do you have any plans of how do you quantify how good that code is in the sense of code size? Is the code right? Is, is, there, is there some kind of stress test that you guys foresee running? So um, we have um, LTP support in, in, in our build infrastructure. Uh, but right now, we don't do that regularly. We are still struggling keeping everything booting. Yeah, so. We are not the quite there yet to sort of post regular results. Um, right now, we have a build board running which tests the vExpress, vExpress build, um, and uh, we have one nightly builder for x86, but right now it's, it's broken, it's red. Um, but we are about to fix that. Yeah, and the, the x86 builder is actually uh, no, it's the tiny config. It's a stripped down config. So it's not yet the full blown as much as possible variant because that would take hours um, on that machine. But we are step by step. We'll, we'll come to that point. Linus. Any other questions? Oh. So, what are the expected bonuses from using LLVM? Are we looking at much faster build times? Are we looking at better code generation? Are we just looking at having a second compiler? I'm, mm -hmm. I'd like to know if you have any numbers at all, things like that. Um, I, I don't have the build times in, in my head, Bihan. Uh, we, we actually haven't looked directly at build times or at code sizes yet. Um, in general, LLVM compiles faster than, than GCC. The reason we haven't looked specifically at, um, at sizes yet is just in general, the, the benchmarks show that, uh, that the other, other places like Pharonix and such have done, the build times and the amount of memory used tend to be lower 
overall. Um, as far as code size and speed of code is concerned, in general, Clang and GCC are, you know, sometimes a bit slower, sometimes a bit faster. The fact is that Clang is largely caught up to what GCC is able to do on certain code sizes. It's very hard to quantify that on the kernel. So that's not something we spent a lot of time on yet, uh, because uh, we know right now it's more or less, more or less a, a dead heat. And we haven't fully optimized everything yet, obviously. I, I would say um, this is kind of a long game sort of thing, that I would, ex I would expect that maybe two, three years from now, you'd see Clang and LLVM have the optimization capacity to, to generate a smaller kernel or a faster kernel. But I don't think that it's a short term sort of thing. I think that you've got two things primarily that are going to make Clang and LLVM a stronger compiler in the long run. Um, the first is that you've got the potential to do really powerful whole program optimization, um, which sounds like a kind of crazy thing to do with a kernel, but I imagine that someday in the future um, that's going to be a thing that, that we'll be able to do. Um, and the second thing is that I think the Clang and LLVM framework, it's much easier to add an optimization pass there. And I also think that there's a lot more people who are currently invested in working on Clang and LLVM. So the short answer is I, don't, I, I certainly would be surprised if we generate a smaller kernel or a faster kernel or a better kernel right now. But two, three years from now, it, who knows? It, it, it could be a lot closer. And there's other, there's other reasons, too, why, uh, why LLVM is, is worth uh, approaching. I, I talked about that in my talk, so I won't go over it again necessarily now, but I, I can, I can uh, expand on that later. Yeah, just in general, there's, um, there will be a talk later on using the static uh, analysis and, and the other kinds of tools that you can use uh, by supporting the LLVM suite. So it is a compiler suite. There are lots of tools that can be built with the LLVM libraries. Um, and there's also been an interest from, uh, from students and researchers who want to analyze the AST uh, of the kernel once it's been uh, compiled with Clang. So I do think that there's a lot of opportunity, certainly in research, uh, by supporting LLVM uh, to advance ways that the kernel can be analyzed. Yes. Yes, that and many other things too. Yeah, so one point I was bringing was that we're, I mean, there are some projects I'm uh, working with uh, which are looking into LLVM to automatically instrument uh, the, the kernel code, application code, uh, for tracing, for static analysis and everything. So on the tool side, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, so, and mo more uh, for, for your mutex, mutex problem, I'm uh, looking at the use of built-in constant P and it seems to be entirely bogus. Because they seem to be passing an expression when, I mean, the GCC documentation uh, expects a value. And the second thing is, I mean, uh, you could pass 0, x, 1, 2, 3, and it would actually see that as a constant expression. So the, the null check is doing nothing. So yeah. Yeah. you we, might just want to fix it. We, might, we, pro we should grab the author. He's here and sit down and uh, knock that out. That's it. Anybody else? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jan Simone. It's actually perfect. We're perfectly on time to get to the next talk.